is a three-way speaker like this M5 better than a two-way speaker that only has a woofer and a tweeter? Well, there's no hard and fast answer to that one. It's like saying all red cars are faster than all black cars. I mean, it's kind of a nonsensical question, but it comes up really, really frequently. I get customers all the time asking me, well, your, M3, your M3 model, which is essentially a shorter version of the M5 with just the woofer and the tweeter, how much benefit is there going to the M5, which as you can see is a three-way with a five and a quarter inch mid-range driver. If we do a really apples to apples comparison, because of course we have like essentially the same speaker, just slightly larger. And I'm not gonna talk about the fact that because of the extra cabinet volume in the M5, yes, the base extension and performance is going to be better, but let's just focus on why a three-way speaker might be better and why it may not. So one thing that happens with all drive units is that the off-axis performance or the dispersion of sound from a drive unit decreases with increasing frequency. So as the notes go higher, the amount of information that's dispersed at angles off-axis to the driver they get reduced. And that's dependent on a number of factors, but one of the biggest ones is the size of the radiating area, the size of the drive unit. And there are a couple things going on. One is just the shape and the wavelengths of those higher frequencies uh, involved, and then also something called the breakup mode of the driver. So at some point, any drive unit, and it doesn't matter what the material is, it doesn't matter if it's a ribbon or a planar magnetic or whatever, at some point, the drive unit, the diaphragm will stop moving in what's called a pistonic fashion, which means the entire diaphragm is moving in and out as a single unified radiating surface. When breakup occurs, and it will occur at some frequency, you get a chaotic random motion where there's, there's bends and ripples and things going on on the surface of the diaphragm. So it means it's not, it's not moving in a purely linear or like I said before, pistonic fashion. Now, what does this mean? How does this apply to three ways versus two ways? Well, I'm limited in how far I can use a six and a half inch woofer like this in frequency. I, I have a limitation of where the crossover of the tweeter needs to be. It can't be at 6,000 hertz because this driver's performance off axis is, is, is not going to be very good at 6,000 hertz. At 2000 hertz, it's still perfect. And as you're probably aware from either previous videos or reading uh, information on Axiom Audio, we put a lot of effort into what we call the family of curves, which includes all of the radiated sound from the speaker, on axis, off axis, all the way around 360 degrees around the cabinet, horizontally and vertically. And putting all of that information together, weighting it, averaging it, gives us two very important things. In addition to the on-axis frequency response measurement, we get a listening window, which incorporates all of the first reflections in the room, and the sound power, which encompasses the entire radiated sound that's going to interact with your listening room. Now those family of curves, we want the off-axis performance to be uniform. We don't want dips and gaps occurring as you go further and further off-axis between the crossover points of the drivers. So hopefully you're still with me. I'm, it, it's a little bit complicated, I understand that. If I'm, like I said, crossing this woofer over directly to a tweeter, I have to be very careful about where the crossover point occurs. And even if I do my best job, there are limitations on how smooth the off-axis response is going to be in a two-way speaker using this woofer. It's just a fact of life. Now moving to a three-way speaker and putting a smaller drive unit to handle the mid-range information and cross over the tweeter means because it's a smaller diaphragm, it can extend higher in frequency 
and maintained good dispersion and good off-axis performance. What does that mean? It means the listening window and the family of curves can be better. And if those are better, and better that definition between different companies that use these measurements, everybody has their own idea, Axiom included, we look for very smooth, uniform frequency response, particularly in the transitions between the drive units, so the crossover points. The benefit is that you'll get a more neutral, more spacious sounding loudspeaker with better imaging and better sound staging characteristics, the better that listening window and that sound power measurement look. And the best we can get is by dividing up the frequency spectrum into more drive units, like a three-way system here, because of that crossover from a smaller diaphragm drive unit that has better off-axis dispersion. There are some downsides. It's not all a panacea and, you know, a fantastic thing. We should just, everything should be just three ways. And I'm not even talking about the cost because obviously we have to have a larger cabinet. We have to have a separate drive unit. The mid-range has to be in its own volume. So we need a sealed sub-enclosure inside so that the mid-range doesn't interact with the pressure from the, the woofer inside the cabinet. I'm not talking about those things. What I'm talking about is from a design standpoint, because now instead of having just a crossover from a woofer to a tweeter, you have a crossover from woofer to mid-range and mid-range to tweeter. And guess what? That makes things way more complex when it comes to crossover design, linearizing and optimizing everything, and the amount of adjustments and variables that you have to play with. More variables means more things that you have to uh, investigate and try out and more listening tests need to be done because there's more variables to change and see how this impacted what we're actually hearing. The measurements only go so far. What I would say is that if you're looking at a particular speaker, a speaker brand or a line of speakers within a brand, and there's an offer of both a two-way and a three-way version of the same speaker, just different models, try them out, listen to them, see what you hear. And a well-designed three-way speaker, in my opinion, is always going to outperform a well-designed two-way speaker if we're talking about the same designer, the same company, the same type of drive, drive units, et cetera. Remember what I said before, all red cars are not faster than all black cars because there are too many variables and too many opinions on you know, what makes a good loudspeaker design, et cetera. My experience with our own Axiom products and with other products I've designed over the years, three-way systems really can't be beat in comparison to a two-way. So I hope that answers that question. I hope I didn't lose you there. It's a difficult topic without getting into lots of graphs and acoustics and mathematics. Just remember, it all comes down to maintaining and getting the best dispersion and off-axis performance from the speaker. And the best way to do that is with a three-way system. Thank you as always for watching, and I look forward to your comments and your questions.